This is page 314, graphing using intercepts. Uh, Hannah's just going to write on the board what the definition of an x-intercept and a y-intercept is. Until that time, let's look at this question over here. And it says, graph 4x plus 3y equals 12 using intercepts. So There's a specific method that works spe uh, uh, particularly when the form of the equation looks like this. We just talked about different forms of the equation. Well, look at this. It has an x term and a y term on the left-hand side, and it's equal to 12. That's called the standard form of the equation, and it works great for the intercept method. I'll show you why. First of all, the thing you really need to remember and not mix up is when you're looking for the x-intercept, you make y equal to 0. When you're looking for the y-intercept, logically, what would you make equal to 0? X, right? But that's as simple as that is. People forget that and confuse that on tests, on quizzes, and in their homework. I'm here, okay. All right. Now it's the same idea. We've got a t-chart. You're looking for the x-intercept. What do we do? We make y, y equals zero. zero. We're looking for the y-intercept. We make x equal to zero. So let's look for the y-intercept. Let's make x equal to zero, and we'll find the y-intercept by plugging in zero for x. So here we go, 4 times 0 plus 3 times y equals 12. Y? You're looking for y because we plugged in 0 for x, okay? All right? Uh, the, no, we'll do it this way. It's always good to start with x with 0 because that's the way we think. So 4 times 0 plus 3y equals 12. We just solve it. What do we get? 4. four. Yeah, y equals 4. All right. Three. There we go. And now we put in zero for y, okay? And we'll do it in green. And we solve this way. Four times x plus three times zero equals twelve. Please write this down as we do it, Omave. And because we put in y zero, zero for y. Oh, okay. Oh, you just chose a page. We choose them differently. Oh. And um, you just put, chose zero. I put one. Yeah. Well, right. we chose zero. Why did we choose zero? Why not one or three or four? Because zero is the easiest to do. That's true, but also because zero gives us the what? Y. Y. The intercepts. That's the whole point. So four x equals twelve, and x equals three. Okay. And now we put that there. And guess what? In terms of graphing, this works really well. Okay. This works really, really easily. Uh, 0, 4, okay? 0 for x, 4 for y means we're going to go simply up here. We don't, do, we don't go to the right or the left because zero, you know, 0 doesn't take us right or left. 3, 0 means we go simply 1, 2, 3, right there. And we don't go up or down because 0. 0 keeps us fixed on that axis. This is the x-axis, that's the y-axis. And this is the y-intercept, and that's the x-intercept, because that's where the line crosses that axis. And when we draw a line, it's really simple. Just put them through those two points, and we have our line. We have our line, and we have our two points. We have our two intercepts, and we're done. That's it? That's it. It's, it's similar to what we did over there, except it's actually easier because you know your points are going to be chosen because you know you're looking for intercepts. And it works like this, and it's just intercept, intercept, boom. You got it. Let's do another. Let's do another one. Glenna? Um, I, I put one in for x. Okay, but that's, that's not wrong in the sense that we're looking to find the line, and you'd still find the line. But they're saying graph <laughs> using intercepts. <laughs> when so this kind of question, you, you have to both? use zeros. Yeah, you have to use this oh. method, Omave. Head up, please. You have to use this method to do it. You have to use the zeros. You can't start putting one or whatever in because that's a different method. Okay, this is the graph using intercept method, and it's very specific to this question. Let's take a moment to look over these definitions. Somebody please read it out loudly. Yes, Glenda, go. The x-intercept of a line is the x-coordinate of the point where the line intercepts the x-axis. The y-intercept of a line is the y-coordinate of the point where the line intercepts the y-axis. When you're looking for the y-intercept, 
Make x equal to 0. When you're looking for the x-intercept, make y equal to 0. When you're looking for the x-intercept, make y equal to 0. Let's get that together. Looking for the x-intercept, 1, 2, 3. When you're looking for the x-intercept, make y equal to 0. When you're looking for the x-intercept, y equal 0. Thank you. The x-intercept is the place where, logically, this line crosses that axis. And the y-intercept, basically, it's where the line crosses that axis. All right? Okay, this was a question we picked out of the book. It's called, it's graph using the intercepts, and the equation given is 2y minus 3x equals 6. Uh, basically, you get your t-chart, put in 0 for x, solve for y. If we put in 0 for x, guess what? It's gone. It's not there anymore. 2y equals 6, you divide by 2 on both sides, y equals 3. Back in the t-chart, and you plot the point 0, 3, which is hard to see unless we move this over. There we go. Uh, 0, 3 is right there. 1, 2, 3, up, and there it is. Uh, over here, we plug in, we make y equal to 0, because we're looking for the x-intercept. That means this is gone, and all we have is negative 3x equals 6. We solve it right here. We divide by negative 3 right here, and x equals negative 2. Negative 2, 0 is our point. We graph it over here, negative 2, 0. Draw the line, and we're done. That's it for this question. Graphing by intercept is actually much easier than the other methods. It's really quite easy. Make sure you put 0 in. OK, now we're going to graph horizontal and vertical lines. All of these things, somehow they're like they're easy as long as you understand them right the first time and, and, and don't get confused. So on x and y chart, the y equals 5, and that's 0. Um, but what happens if y x equals 1? Y is, y is still 5. What happens if x is equal to 2? 10. No, it's still 5. Why does it say 5? Because that's all it is. There's no x. It doesn't exist. Yeah? It's a weird concept, but it works. No, it makes if, sense. It does. Yeah, Go ahead, Omavit. Because if you um, if you like put it on a graph, yeah. If if it if it doesn't have the x on there, then you can't substitute. Exactly. Good for you. What? That's right. There is no x to substitute. I mean, the point is, there's no x to substitute in here. Because according to this equation, there is no x-axis. Exactly. There's no. no there's an x-axis. There's no x-coordinate. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's right. But basically, but you could take it away and it'd be the same. Yeah, x x could be anything. And that's the reason you draw horizontal lines. That's right. X could be anything. Y has to be five. No, is it a horizontal or vertical line? Horizontal. Okay, let's check it out. Zero five. It's a vertical. Is there one? Vertical. Two, three, no, four, it's five. No, oh, yeah, horizontal. It's horizontal. One five is here. 2, 5 is there. Negative 2, 5 is there. It's just horizontal, period. It's a horizontal line. Through that. y, we put y equals 5 here. Why all of a sudden did you go from like 0, 1, 2, and then into negatives? Because I'm just showing that you can put any point in here. Oh. It doesn't matter. I could put negative 100. You're always going to get 5 because that's the way this is written. See, the, by understanding this, you won't have to revert to memory. What I've noticed a lot of students do is they try to remember, including me, try to remember y equals 5 is horizontal. Yeah, i got to remember that. I'm going to write it down. i put it in my arm. I'm going to write it. You'll forget. You always get confused on the test unless you understand it because there's so many different things to remember in graphing that doing the memory trick thing really ends up being a problem because it, it kind of it, it, it switches around on you. Here's the problem. Here's the inherent confusion in this. This is the y-axis, but the line y equals 5 is horizontal. That's kind of weird. Because the y-axis goes up and down, yet the line y equals 5 or y equals 10 or y equals 20 goes along horizontal, which is, if you're using memory tricks, that gets confusing. OK, comments. Rachel. Well, the reason it goes horizontal is because like, you don't have an x, so it's basically just saying that the reason it goes horizontal is to give off any possibility for what x can equal. That's right. You do have an x. I mean, yes, you don't have it here, but x it means you can choose anything for x and it will always be y equals. No, x is more than just 0. It's 0, 1, 10. It can be x is anything you want it to be. Y is fixed at 5. Y is fixed at 5, no matter what. Yeah, this question is, is the kind of flip side of the other question. Now we're graphing x equals negative 4. In this question, if we make a t-chart, we have to fix negative 4 for every single value of x. No matter what we pick for, whatever, no matter what y is, 
x is negative 4. And the way that plays on the chart or on the graph is like this. You get a line which is vertical at negative 4.